Okay, so I have heard, I've seen presentations where somebody who's not actually licensed as a CDS, he'll get in front of maybe a realtor and he'll say, okay, this is how you know you're in a meth home. And you look for beakers and vials and tubes, etc. The reality is that doesn't happen. Um, meth heads are way too nervous about being caught and they're not going to just leave that behind. Uh, I've only seen that happen once in the hundreds of homes that I have been in. And that was in a deep, dark corner of a basement where you wouldn't, you know, it, that place felt haunted. You know, it was, it was bad. It was dark and it was in the corner of that dark, nasty, haunted, gross basement. Um, other than that, I've never seen the beakers and vials that are typically uh, a sign of a meth house. What is... Um, a little more common you know yeah you can have the tubes and bottles but you can also be looking for things that are out of place for example ephedrine and Sudafed are typically used as um, as part of the meth making process especially if the guy is a small timer so maybe if you see ephedrine in the in the kitchen that's not really a big deal or maybe it's in the medicine cabinet not not necessarily a big deal but if it's in an out of the way place like uh, the basement near the bathroom, uh, you know, that, you know, that might be more of an indication. Uh, rat poison, you know, a gun uh, being left out, or if you got Bunsen burners or just things that don't belong, uh, maybe you see kerosene actually inside the house. Uh, that's part of the process. Or if you see a large pile of matches, maybe in a bedroom, that's phosphorus that are also used sometimes in the, uh, in the process. Of course, needles. Um, I've been in homes where you move the ceiling tiles and a bunch of needles fall out. I've been in homes where you remove the, um, the heat vents and a bunch of needles are in there. So, you know, this sort of thing might be what you would be looking for as a precursor or signs that you might have a lab. There are materials that will test the home positive for meth. And these are very common ones. Uh, we have all taken uh, Sudafed or ephedrine. Um, that is a very common, uh, you know, the, the difference between ephedrine and meth are this much. I understand that uh, all they have to do to turn ephedrine into meth is just strip off like an oxygen molecule or something similar to that and then you've got meth. So the use of ephedrine and Sudafed are um, very common among meth heads. It's a very easy way to pass up a lot of other steps and go directly to the end result. That is one of the reasons why they made Sudafed and ephedrine and some other uh, chemicals a lot more difficult to get to back when they passed the laws in 2004. Um, in addition, uh, chemicals like Ritalin uh, are also chemically very similar to meth. Um, sometimes it's meth repackaged. So, for example, you could take a pill of Sudafed, you know, which we have all taken, we've all popped in our mouth and, you know, it improves the sinuses. You could take a pill, drop it on the counter, and then pull the pill away and the, the little bits of dust from that pill uh, if sampled, will test the home positive for meth. And as a matter of fact, they're, even though they have changed in the state law, they have changed the meth regulatory limit from 0.1 to 1.0. The Sudafed, or the ephedrine uh, standard is still 0.1. You could very easily sample a counter where ephedrine, or maybe an ephedrine pill was just placed there and um, you could legally show that that property is contaminated with meth uh, just by sampling that location. We've covered in this segment the materials that will test the home positive and we talked about the precursors or signs that you might have a lab as you're going in. The reality is that you're going to want to pretty much stick with those four potential signs of a lab that we talked about in the earlier segment um, just because those are far more common. I mean, you and I, we go into homes that are empty or maybe they're not empty, but we're not going to see beakers. Uh, what we might see is the pet urine smell, the messiness, that sort of thing like we talked about earlier. Okay, next segment, we're going to give you some background 
and just give you some idea of how other states are dealing with their meth laws, just so that you can understand where Utah is in the spectrum.